This February 15th, we're out here every third Wednesday of the month for the English program. Um, you guys can come out and see us, so next time will be March 15th and so on every time. Um, for the most part, I'm just happy everybody's out here. We've got some really cool performances tonight. we got some music, we got some spoken word, some surprises, so it's going to be a really good time. And we just want you guys to have fun. Make some noise for me, please. I don't know how I feel about Valentine's Day. Um, I, I don't. I don't know how it feels about me. Is uh, is is more accurate. I, I think I often want it to go well, um, but uh, I, I never know what's going to happen. I never know what's going to happen. It's uh, it's always a, a bit of a surprise, um, and sometimes it goes really well, and sometimes it doesn't. But every time I end up with a story to tell. So. Uh, as promised, I'm up here tonight to uh, tell you those stories in the form of those words as they came to me in real time. I'm going to be reading to you uh, some actual words from excerpts from uh, love letters that I've gotten, uh, that I've written and that I wrote at the time. I want to tell you about the first Valentine's Day I ever had, um, which started the night before Valentine's Day. So I'm going to read that to you. Um, I suppose the way it, it began is uh, being in high school. I always fell into this strange situation where uh, either I liked a girl, but she didn't like me quite back the same way, or a girl liked me, but I didn't quite like her the same way. It wasn't until college, I believe very early college, I was working as a waiter and going to college to become a teacher, that I, uh, it, it, it worked. It actually happened. I, I met a girl who liked me as much as I liked her. And I was like, all right, this is great. So uh, we... Uh, we went out one time, I was at Wayne State at the time, we went out, we got a coffee, and then the next time we went out, there was food, and then um, we started getting to know each other as a few weeks went by. And uh, I remember, I was very excited because it had so timed itself that uh, on the first, the first Valentine's Day, we were going to have Valentine's Day, it was going to be the first Valentine's Day with, with a girlfriend. So I got off work uh, that night, I had in my car ready for the next day, it was uh, the night of February 13th, I had, um, let's see, I had a box of chocolates and some flowers and a teddy bear. And I was ready to bring that out and uh, we were going to have a good night. And then um, I got a call from her uh, after work or she had texted or something and said she wanted to see me. So, uh, so I went over to talk to her. And I spent some time with her that night, the night of February 13th, the night before Valentine's Day, and then I came home. Uh, and I had to write about what had happened. And so I wrote something down that I'm going to read to you uh, in its totality uh, to start off the night. All right, so here it is. February 13th. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. I bought for her a half dozen roses, a teddy bear, and a small box of chocolates. I was hoping to give them to her tomorrow. Now I have no one to give them to. She called me right before I got out of work. She wanted me to come by her place. She needed to talk about something. I didn't know what, but I made some guesses. She has a personal issue that she wants to talk about. She's scared of something. She wants to break up with me. I could have called and asked her what she wanted to see me so late for, but I didn't bother. After all, the suspense was exciting. 
I got out of work and quickly rushed over to her place. It was dark and snowy. She lived on the third floor, apartment 300. I went in, greeting her with a hug as usual. We went and sat down to talk. We conversed aimlessly for some time about paintings, then about our day. But something was wrong, uneasy, uncomfortable, down. I asked her. She said nothing while looking away, refusing to make eye contact. Her personality was typical, but here and there I sensed occasional bursts of sorrow, discomfort. Finally, I asked, so did you miss me so much that you called me over here so late at night? She laughed at my joke somewhat uneasily. No, she said. I wanted to talk to you about something. I joked again, knowing that I wasn't totally joking. <laughs> what, are you breaking up with me? <laughs> no, she responded. Then things got cold, quiet, solemn. I've been having doubts. She forced the sour, heavy words out of her chest. About what, I asked, knowing the answer. About us, she said. Better tell you now than later. She said we were too different. She said she now saw me more as a brother or a friend than as a boyfriend. I asked why. She didn't know why. She called herself a psycho, then went on talking about our many differences. I asked her about her past. I don't have issues, she constantly repeated. We exchanged words, both knowing what this all meant. I was calm, content, understanding, relaxed, easy, normal, smooth, cool. It drove her nuts. That's how I'd always been around her. It always bothered her. If anything was going to make me angry, this should have been it. But it didn't. For some supernatural reason, it didn't. So, friends, I said. It was official. From now on, we would be just friends. She was very insistent on that point. She wanted us to remain close friends. I trust you, she would always say. We carried on a casual conversation. I needed to leave, but she didn't want me to. Finally, I could not stay any longer, so I got up to leave, gave her one last hug, and went on. We agreed that I would come by the next day again to see her to hang out. I would bring the flowers and bear and chocolates, the ones for Valentine's Day. What else would I do with them? My, how calmly I took all this in. With all honesty and genuineness, none of it bothered me one bit. I was so understanding, so calm, so cheerful, so accepting, so cool. None of it, nothing bothered me one bit. I'll come and see her again tomorrow. I got in my car and drove home. Things were fine. I was not in the least bit bothered or saddened or angered of anything of what had just occurred. Until a question popped into my head. Did I just do it again? I paused. The curve of my smile straightened. My brow relaxed. My eyes widened. More questions followed. Did I just allow someone to hurt me again? Am I hurt? Did I lose? Did she get me? Did she fool me? Did she break my heart? My heart sank within me. I told her before, and I knew it. She would break my heart. That horrid shadow, that devilish sinking feeling, clinged at my chest again. I knew that feeling all too well, and though I vowed that I would never, never, never let someone bring that feeling to me, it was back. Their names, all their names came back to me. All the girls who had done this to me. I couldn't believe it. I had done it again. I had done it again. I had given someone the opportunity to hurt me. I knew she would do it. By God, I did. And now there is nothing left to do but lament, curse, mourn, rage, weep, scream, sob, twitch, suffer. I know not what to make of this, what will become of me once I get over this. Hard, terrible days are ahead of me. I will weather them. I will get over her soon. But what have I learned? What will this experience do for me? Time will tell. I have fiery ideas burning within me, bouncing fervently in my head. But I will say no more for now. I'm going to try to get a refund for those Valentine's gifts I got her. I was going to give them to her when I went to see her tomorrow. I will not give them to her. I will not see her. I cannot trust her or be her friend. That is impossible. I said I would, but I lied. It is impossible. Hard days are coming, and God helped me to get through this. I've done it again. I've done it again. I gave someone a chance, the hammer with which to strike me, the dagger which with, to, with which to cleave my breast in two. I have failed. I let her win.
Breakups hurt. Music helps. Please help me welcome to the stage, Miss Isra Darwish. <laughs> 